Hey guys, this is Holly Tucker, and you're listening to the Garrett Smith Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 35 of the show. Today we have a really awesome performer with us who, I guess after last week, I can say I've seen you perform two and a half times um, <laughs> instead of three. <laughs> you were playing a song. I'm just going to jump right into this part. Uh, that Maker's Mark song you were playing, that was really cool. Like, I had I had like heard a piece of that before and thought I just bre- breezing by. I'm like, oh, OK, it's about whiskey or something. But no, that's actually a really good Christian song. I liked it. Thank you so much. That's a, I'm, I'm hoping to record that one and put it on the next album. So uh, I, that's why I've been playing it out, you know, so people can start getting familiar with it. When you started playing it, I was I was, I was sitting with uh, Whitley Casey, or if anyone out there is listening on the country scene, check out Landon Heights. Uh, I'll probably have him on here soon. I told him I was kind of like, I don't know that I've heard this one before, but I really like it. And so when I was getting the podcast ready, I was like, I want to play that one. I didn't, I don't think she's got it out though. And I looked, I was like, nope, not yet. Yeah, not, not yet. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be on whatever is next though. Cause that, that's definitely at the top of my list. So, <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, I like to start these things off by telling everybody how I discovered or met the artist. And I'm actually going to tell you the story real quick, how we met. Cause I guarantee you probably will not remember this. Um, okay. and there's kind of like a crazy spin to it at the end that I didn't even realize till today. But, uh, back in 2011, uh, this was long before I ever picked up a guitar or anything. I didn't, I never knew I was going to do music. Um, I worked in politics and with, <laughs> without saying any side or event, uh, cause you know, people don't like to argue on Facebook or anything, but I like to keep my comment section clean. There was an event that I worked at, at Nutty Brown cafe in 2011. And I was a vendor and they had live music going. The performer was somebody named Holly Tucker. And I this I don't know if this was before or after the voice. It was it was pretty far back. So at this point I'm like, oh, I don't know who this is. And then about a minute later, I'm like, okay, whoever this is, she's really good. <laughs> so uh you came by the table for the candidate I was working for. And at that point I was like, I didn't know what to say. So I just go, You're better than Taylor Swift. <laughs> and you were kind of like Well, all right. Thanks. So that was the first time I got to hear you play. The second time was actually uh, the 4th of July in Belton last year um, with Michael Carabelli. It was a great show. But the the crazy spin on the story of where I first heard you perform is that that day, uh, one of the guys that worked the campaign I was on, uh, he bought this random shirt at a vendor table and didn't want it. I don't know why he bought it, but he just gave it to me. And I happened to notice this afternoon, I'm wearing that shirt and I had no idea. I didn't even put it together. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. I met Holly at that event and I'm wearing the shirt. So that was a thing. But yeah, so kind of take us, you know, fast forward 2011 to now. What have you been working on lately? I know this has been kind of a hectic year for everybody where it seems like we'd all be sitting around, but a lot of us are pretty busy. So tell me what you've been working on. Yeah, you know, it's been an interesting year for me. Um, I have not been able to play live shows, obviously, just because everything going on. Um, I mean, I've done a few acoustic things, but full band is pretty much, uh, it's pretty much been shut down for me since January. Mm. And um, so I've, I've just been trying to stay busy with as many gigs as I can, but also um, I've been, I've had a, a lot of chances to write this year. So I've gotten together with several people in Texas and Um, just on my own, just been able to sit down and really get my creative juices flowing and, um, and focus on that aspect of the music. And that has been really cool. Just, um, you know, even in the midst of, of all of this, getting to still be inspired. And, um, so yeah, I've I've been doing that on the music side and also making some new Christmas music I have coming out very soon. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah going to be coming out hopefully here in the next two weeks so i'm very excited about that and uh and then you know i've been doing other things in the meantime too like i've started um my i have miniature australian shepherds and i've been breeding them so um they they had a litter and we got them all good homes and so you know that was some income for me during this time and it's really random but you know god has been really faithful and taking care of me Sometimes random is the best stuff and God answers stuff quite randomly. Yes, 100%. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of God and answers and prayers and everything, I've noticed that you've done some things. I don't know if there's something regular that you do, but I've seen video clips that uh, you've done some worship music on and off. Um, I don't know if that's like a regular thing, but is that something you do often? 
Yeah, actually, uh, I so my home church here in Waco is First Baptist Woodway, and I have been on the praise team there for oh I don't know probably a decade. Um, so I do I do help lead worship there, but I also through this COVID time accepted a, a part time worship leader position at another church in Waco. Wow! <laughs> and uh, so that's probably what you've been seeing is is videos of me leading worship there for that church, uh, Park Lake Drive Baptist Church. So yeah. That's really cool. It's you're not the first guest I've had on here who does a lot of church music. And I think it's really cool that kind of like the Texas music scene and the church scene kind of overlap in a lot of ways. It's good to see artists kind of giving back in that way. Absolutely. I I truly believe the country music family takes care of each other, just like the family of God takes care of each other. So it's great. It's exactly how it should be. Well, you've got a a lot of new stuff you've been working on. Um, If we were to play a song here and kick things off, what song should we play? You know, I sure would love for you to play my brand new single that is on the charts right now called Rhythm of You. Here that is, Rhythm of You. To the rhythm of you yeah. I get to sway in and I tap my feet You count it off just by looking at me And I move to the rhythm of Take us through that song. You know, what what was the background and uh, what inspired you to put that song out? You know, I, um, I, I have made my career try to be uh, or trying to be 
as message oriented as possible. Um, a, a lot of my songs have real clean or fun um, country messages. And I, I always want to say something really strong or deep or heartfelt with my music. So for this particular single, I wanted to just lay back a little bit and relax and just put out something that people could have a good time listening to and um, you know, just, just sway a little bit and just tap your foot a little bit and just, I don't know, just have some fun. So it was less message oriented and more, uh, vibe oriented. And that's really what we were going for. I, I wrote this with a couple of my buddies, uh, Paul Sykes and Adam Wheeler, and, um, they just, they helped me create exactly the, the kind of energy that I wanted for that. That's really great. And one thing I'll say about your songwriting, I've said this on the last two episodes, so I'm going to tell the listeners, I promise this is not a scripted compliment and (laughs) I'm not a broken record here, but um, the the previous two guests I had on here were Vanessa Lynn Bird and Julia Hatfield. And I've told the two of them the same thing I'm telling you is that y'all were some of the Y'all are some of my favorite female artists in the country scene because back in, I don't say 10 years ago or so, right before I started listening to your music, I was I was one of those dudes that only listened to dudes for the most part. I was kind of ignorant on that. And I just I would listen. I would listen to Nashville and be like, OK, I get it. You're mad at your ex-boyfriend. You're going to key his car, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, but then everyone was doing that. I was like, well, there's yeah. nothing new about this. Everybody's trying to be Carrie or trying to be Miranda. So whenever I first discovered your music, it was kind of like a breath of fresh air because I'm like, oh, OK, there's more. Me- there's like you said earlier, it's more me- message oriented. There's something actually to listen to here. And so yeah. that, it was, that's something I've always enjoyed about your music. And that's something you've kept. And so I, I really like that. Well, thank you so much. I really I appreciate you saying that. I, I was uh, I was actually on Julia's podcast the other day that she's doing called Women Crush Wednesdays. And she kind of she she had a similar thing to say and, and I just said you know Julia that that's really cool because I still and probably always will consider myself a student of songwriting just because there's always something new to learn you're never you're never at that point where you've just arrived and you're the best you can possibly be you know there's always change and adaptation and uh, just new fun things you can learn to do so um, say for someone to tell me that they like songs and my writing. It's just very special to me. That's super cool. Well, kind of take us, I know we're talking about growing as a songwriter, but we're actually going to kind of do a U-turn. Take me back to the beginning. You know, what were your early influences and kind of take us through how you got your start and where that went? Yeah, I got my influences pretty early on. Uh, my parents were both singers growing up, and uh, they actually had a band back in college that they formed together, and they were on the road, and so the music life is in my blood. And uh, whenever they got married and had a family, they did not stop uh, playing music. They would always be singing or playing somewhere in a church or a wedding or a special event. And so I grew up watching my parents on stage, um, getting to, to live out their dream. And it just really made me want to do it. So my parents were definitely my earliest influence, but they introduced me to uh, country music very early on as well. And, you know, I grew up in the strong era of the nineties and, you know, nineties country is just like, it's the love of my life. So you had influences <laughs> like uh, Sarah Evans and Faith Hill and Martina McBride and uh, Jody Messina and just strong females that, um, you know, made me believe that one day I could do it. So I would I would say those are my, my biggest ones. This is a really random thing to say, but um, during quarantine, I, I noticed the other day, I guess Sarah Evans has been doing like karaoke at her house with people. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And it's like, I guess her daughter sings with her. And I was scrolling yeah. really fast. I didn't notice, but her daughter looks just like her. Like <laughs> They look like twins yeah. if you scroll too fast. Yeah, that's so true. I follow <laughs> that too. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> you got your influences through 90s country and things like that. Uh, what, what made you decide, you know, you want to make a career out of it? Uh, well, I got on stage for the first time and I sang at my home church in uh, actually First Baptist Woodway that I still go to. And uh, it's just it's kind of a moment I, I, w- I know I wasn't very old. I was just seven, you know, but I felt something in my spirit that just kept telling me to, to practice and kept telling me to sing. And so over the course of my um you know, preteen youth, I guess, my parents would take me all around the state of Texas to every Opry and, uh, you know, karaoke night and open mic night and 
uh, hard, hard affair or something like that, you know, um, something where I could get on a stage and practice and, um, just hone my craft. And so I, I really got to, to practice my performance and all of that aspect of it early on. Um, and I would say probably around the first time I made my first album, I was about 14 years old. And I would say that's really when it, it kicked in for me that, Hey, I'm, I'm going to try to do this for a living for my future. That's insane that you were able to get an album by that age. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I mean, like I, I didn't even know I was going to do this stuff until I was in my mid twenties. And then when I finally went to go record music, I was like, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool that, you know, the earlier on you're able to do that stuff, you build so much experience. Yeah, that's very true. And I had a lot of great people around me that, that protected me and, and helped me build on, on what I had, you know, cause I wasn't writing that early in my life, but I knew a lot of songwriters and, and people in my life that were just really gifted with music and producing. So, um, so I just, I was, I was blessed. I mean, that's all I can say. It wasn't just me. It was, uh, it was every person that God put in my life. Well, and a few more people were put in your life later on. You ended up on the voice team Blake, correct? Yeah, that's right. What was that experience like? How did that all come about? That was crazy. I was, uh, you know, when you turn 16, um, all those singing shows like American Idol and X Factor and stuff, um, that's kind of the age you can start trying out for these shows. So I did that as soon as I turned 16 and I kept getting told no. Everywhere I went, I got a no. It was just not working oh. out for me. So about about three years of doing that, I, I finally said, okay, I'm not going to do the singing show route anymore. It's not going to work for me clearly. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do other things. And then, um, when I was 19, I was in Dallas for another singing opportunity. I can't really remember what it was, but I heard that the voice auditions were going to be close by. So I went to the website and I signed up to audition and, um, you know, I didn't think much of it. I said, you know, this, this is just, what's another no, it'll at least be some more experience for me. So I did it and I got a call back and you know, the rest is history. So, uh, I, I was on season four in 2013 and I was uh, 19 years old at the time. And I made it to top six that, that season with uh, team Blake. That's incredible. And that's, and that's such a cool thing, you know, because not a lot of artists can when they're trying to book a show or they're they're touring, you know, not many people can put, hey, you know, look how far I got on the show, because most people, I think either they don't even go to the audition or it's kind of like you said before, there's a lot of no's that people have to go through. And I think over time, people kind of get worn out of the no process. And so that's really yeah. great that you got to do that. You were 19 when you did The Voice. So did you play shows much through college? Because I know you went to Baylor. What what was that environment like for you as far as getting to perform? Yeah, I did. I actually put together a band um, around probably age 16. And I would start just playing little local gigs really around Waco and uh, the central Texas areas. And I mean, I didn't gig probably every weekend, but I got to do it as much as I could. And um and yeah, I played all through high school and all through uh, college as well. And, you know, being 19, when I got on the show, I was a sophomore in college. So, um, yeah, I've been playing pretty much consistently since I was about 16, 17 years old. That's so cool. And it's insane how many more places there are now for Waco than there were then, because I did my undergrad around that same time in Belton, Texas. And we went up to Waco a lot. Like if we want to go two step or anything like that, go see a concert, we go to Waco. And yeah. there's so much more there now than there was even five to 10 years ago. It's it's really insane how much it's growing. Yes, absolutely. It's it's definitely becoming a little mini Austin or something yeah. like that. <laughs> I call it the Chip and Joanna effect, but I, I you know, I liked Waco a lot before that show, so I can't fully yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so after Baylor, you kept moving on with your career. You know, tell us kind of what came next for you. Well, after the show, um, obviously my life changed. Uh, I came back and I got a ton of requests to perform and, you know, all kinds of things, national anthems, um, acoustic things, full band things, headliners, openers. I mean, just all kinds of things. Um, for, for at least like two or three years after the show, it was just, uh, just on fire. I mean, I was, um, I was performing at least probably like 
200 something dates a year. I mean, it, it was crazy. Um, and trying to do that while I was still in college was, uh, crazy as well, but I did end up getting my degree on time and I got my degree in communications and, uh, yeah, so I, I was able to finish that. And since then, gosh, that's been five years ago uh, that I graduated college. Um, I've just been, I've been playing as much as I can. And I've, I've gone to Nashville a number of times to write and to record and all of that. And, um, I've been touring all of that time. I've released two albums now here in Texas, and I've had seven singles that have charted on, uh, the Texas charts. And I'm working on my, I think this is my seventh actually with rhythm of you. And, um, yeah, it's just been, it's been a crazy musical ride, but I've been loving most of it. (laughs) Well, I, I saw also that you've, you know, you did the national anthem at a chiefs game, wasn't it? I forgot which team yeah. it was, but yeah, the Chiefs. And and yeah, it was the Chiefs. I remember my first thought was, well, at least one of the Texans will play well today. <laughs> so you've, you've done all this, built all this momentum up. And so I'm going to pick the next song we throw in here, because when you release this song, my first thought was, OK, wow, bold statement Two, It just seemed fitting because you were the one who sang it. So I'm going to play You're Going to Know My Name. Oh, <laughs> Rise and shine at 6 a.m. while everybody's not I'm gonna pay my dues, make my way, and give it all I got I'll play every stage slinging this guitar I'll even let it break my heart I got a story and a scar for every battle I fought Every Jack and Jill wants paper bills There's ten more down the row Knock me down, try to count me out But you can't touch my soul I got stubborn running through my veins And if you know me, I'm here to stay You only make me stronger Every time you tell me no Every Jack and Jill wants paper stop me then ain't nothing gonna stop me now nothing stop me then ain't nothing gonna stop me now nothing stop me then ain't nothing gonna stop me now I guess I could like say that on air. Y'all, before I hit record, I told Holly that's one of my favorite one of her songs. But I'm like, why wouldn't I just record that compliment and let everyone hear it? So <laughs> tell, tell me about that song. Yeah, that song has an interesting story. I um, I 
You know, being a female in the Texas country industry is uh, something that has not always been very easy. Um, you know, there's a lot of roadblocks that I've encountered and um, things that I've had to overcome. So um, every now and then I just get really frustrated with it all. And um, I get discouraged and I get down or depressed or whatever. Um, I mean, I always am able to pull myself out of it. But um, one particular day when I was going in for a writing session, I was just really frustrated with with the music industry and being like how hard it is to be a female and, and just everything I have to go through. And I was like, you know, guys, can we write a song about this? I'm just really feeling it today. And and I just I, I know that I'm not the only one that has ever felt this when they have a dream and you know, it's just whatever, whatever is going on in their life, they just, for whatever reason, uh, keep encountering obstacles that, that either people are telling them they can't do it, or they, they aren't good enough or whatever. And I'm just sick of that. You know, if you want to do something, and if you feel the call on your life, you have to keep doing it no matter what. And, and hard work and perseverance is what's going to get you there. Not money, not, uh, you know, who, who, you know, it's, it's, it's sticking in it and it's staying with what you know you're supposed to do. And so that's kind of how this song came about. I just wanted to, first of all, give a confidence boost to myself. And then also hopefully everybody else who hears it can relate and, and give themselves some comp- confidence, you know, um, that's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And that's really good that you put that out there for other people to experience too, because I mean, it's, the Texas music scene is really tough for everybody. And yet you notice when you look at the charts, you see a lot of the same names. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the names on there. However, it is a little suspect that it's kind of like, all right, here's 70 dudes. And then, you know, you'll see Holly's there, Bree's there, Jamie's there. Where's everyone else? Like, it's like, <laughs> and, that, and then they, then they rotate, rotate y'all out. You know, it's kind of like, well, this is a little strange to me because like I said, nothing against the guys who are on the list. Everyone fights hard for right. it. There's a lot of good artists not right. on there, but it's just a little strange that y- you can kind of see that that hits the Texas industry too. When you would think that's more of an outdated practice for a national industry. Yeah. I mean, for sure. It's, it's definitely something that, that I, I think we just have to work on. Cause I mean, if you think about it, the whole Texas music scene started with a group of guys, Willie and the boys. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, the, they're the original outlaws. There were no girls in that, in that group. And that's not their fault. That's just how it started. And yeah. that's, you know, that's how it's grown as well. Uh, cause people, you know, associate with Texas music with being outlaw and being, uh, you know, just, um, not dirty, but, you know, just like just rough and ragged and, uh, you know, living the, the hard lifestyle and that kind of thing. I think people associate Texas music with that. And, um, females typically don't fit that bill. You know, we're, we're usually softer and, <laughs> you know, feminine. But it's growing. It really is. And I'm very hopeful for the future um, that there's going to be a lot more females come up in the ranks. I think we're headed that direction. Um, But I think it's good that you've got songs like this out there to, you know, kind of remind those artists to keep going. Otherwise, we won't we won't get that direction. So that's it's really good that you did that. What uh, what other songs would you say of yours have the best backstories? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) that's uh, that's that's pretty crazy. Um. One of my favorite songs that I get to to tell people about is a single that I had recently um, out, and it's called Take Me Fishing. And I love this story because I, I'm a big fan of Granger Smith and his alter ego, Earl Dibbles Jr. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I follow them on all social media sites and they're just, they're hilarious, right? So one day, Earl said this about women on Twitter. He said, Women really aren't all that complicated. It don't take much to make them happy. All you got to do is call them beautiful and take them fishing. And I was like, well, all right, that man's a genius right there. That's cute. (laughs) (laughs) So I just, I thought that'd make a really cute little country song. And I got my buddy to help me write that idea. And uh, live when we do it in concert, I'm able to mash that up with Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's uh, Fishing in the Dark. So it's really cool to get to see people's reactions to that song and, and, um, and relate with them on that level. I remember the first time I heard that song, when you, when you kind of incorporated the nitty gritty song, I kind of did a double take. I was looking back at my computer, like, did we switch songs or are we still, yep. Nope. That's fitting. (laughs) Just a little mashup. And I think you played that one on our virtual show we did the other day, right? Yes, I sure did. Uh Yeah. 
Yeah, that was really cool. By the way, anyone who hasn't seen it, if you go over to Texas Music Life on Twitter or YouTube, you can find the link through t- uh, Twitter. Uh, go check out the virtual concert. A lot of good artists on there. And Holly actually closed us out the other night. It was really cool. So go check that out. Um, yeah, thank you for having me do that. Yeah, well, thanks for doing it. It was, it was really cool. And thanks to Kyle Pesic for letting us take over Texas Music Life, make that all happen. So it's I don't know how much money was raised because it goes directly to the association and the venues. But I hope that people are helping out. Um, you've speaking of videos and things of that sort, you've put out a lot of music videos and I like the Dallas on your boots video. That one is, I mean, it's just like a really good, solid produced country song. So, uh, what has the music video experience been like for you? You know, honestly, Garrett, I haven't been able to do near as many music videos as I would like to, because, uh, they're just really expensive for not as much return on mm-hmm. your investment. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I've tried to keep the music videos for my biggest singles and um, to because they're supposed to help support um, while you're on tour or while you're going on uh, visiting radio stations or whatever. And, um, you know, it's it's just been kind of a weird year, especially this year to think about about videos. But um, but yeah, the Dallas on your boots video was was a cool experience for sure. Um, getting to go. We actually it's funny. It's called Dallas on your boots, but we filmed it in Austin. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, we got an an actor to come in and, and, and help with that. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a different aspect of the music. You really get to make it come to life visually and give people something else to reference with the, the music. So, um, I'd say it's been a really great experience getting to do those other than the cost of them. They're very expensive. Yeah. I did one as cheap as possible and it still was ridiculous how much it cost to do. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. and the time. I mean, you can't do them quickly either. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I had written in Dallas in your boots to be the next song I was going to play, but would you rather me play that one or take me fishing? Ooh, that's a, <laughs> I threw a curveball. <laughs> both of those songs. Oh man. Uh, you know, if I had to choose, I'd probably say take me fishing. I just I, I really love that song. But um, yeah, so I, I guess that one. All right, we'll throw that one in here. Take me fishing. You say you can't tell what I'm thinking. So you don't even try. Act like I'm so complicated. And I'm always changing my mind You're looking so lost, boy Like you need a road map Well, I'm about to help a brother out Call me beautiful And open my door And rock me to a judge Take me 
So for upcoming projects and plans, you know, uh, I like to ask everybody, what are some of your favorite venues in town to perform? Because I know that the venues are still kind of struggling to open back up, but in a perfect world where everything does open up soon, you know, what are some places you're looking forward to getting back to? Oh, man, I actually love playing in Belton. Funny enough, uh, we talked about that earlier. Um, Belton is always one of my biggest crowds. And uh, anytime I have anything in that city, people just come out for me. It's crazy because it's close to my hometown, but it's not close enough to where, uh, you know, people that aren't really, really good fans would, would drive like an hour or so to come see me. So, um, it, it's just really cool to, to play there. So I'd say probably like chef's barbecue is really cool. Um, you know, there's, there's some places here in Waco, the backyard, bar um you know that's that's always a fun one i really hope to get back to green hall i haven't played that one in probably two two or three years and that was uh that's been my my favorite venue to play at just because of the nostalgia and the spirit of of everybody that comes through that's so cool there's so many people that I would say Green Hall probably gets mentioned on every episode I've done. Um, at oh. least if, if the guest is country if, is a country artist, but it's either, you know, one of the best places ever that I've played or it's man, I haven't got to play there, but it's a goal. I really want to. So it's, it's really telling how Green Hall has impacted so many artists. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just it, it's like the Texas Grand Ole Opry. Everybody wants to do it. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mentioned Texas Music Life earlier. The most recent bracket poll that was on that page was best uh, dance hall or venue in Texas. And I kind of looked at it at the bracket. and I was like, well, this is just going to be Billy Bob's versus Green Hall at the end. Why even do the bracket? But uh, (laughs) a place called Bonita Creek out of Nacogdoches, I guess, got a bunch of SFA students to vote. And not a lot of people, I guess, had seen the bracket yet. So they ended up beating Green Hall in like the third round. And really? yeah, so it came down like Bonita Creek and Hurricane Harry's on that part of the bracket. And of course, you know, A&M voting crowd that took Harry's all the way to the end. But I could have sworn it was going to be Green Hall over Billy Bob's at the final round. Yeah. Yeah. For other plans you've got coming up, what are some of the things you'd like to do this coming year? You know, uh, I guess, are we going back to the scenario of it being a perfect world and covid list? <laughs> Let, let's hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would really like to, uh, put out some more music, some more country music and, um, you know, let, let everybody on my Spotify platform know what I've been up to and, um, with, with all the new writing I've been doing. So that would be definitely a goal. I really honestly just want to get back out there and play full band shows again, because I miss it so much. I mean, performing is really one of my main passions. I, I, I mean, I love, the studio and I love, um, writing and I love every aspect of getting to do this for a career, but, uh, really just presenting a song and making people feel something in a moment. It's just, it's priceless to me. So I'm very much looking forward to getting back out on the road with my band and, um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully some more singles, hopefully some number ones in my future. That would be amazing. I just got word that my current single is top 20 in Texas. So. There you go. That's awesome. So I'm, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm working my way up there, but we'll <laughs> see. So those are what I, I think I'd say that. Well, you mentioned Spotify. I like to make sure that all artists, you know, get their 20,000 plays for five cents. So um, if people aren't following you yet on social media and all the different platforms, uh, where can they follow you? You can definitely follow me at my website, hollytucker.com. I have some really fun merchandise and uh, other things on there. And then you can also follow me on any social platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, and either search Holly Tucker or look up Holly T Music. And that's my handle. And all of my accounts have a blue verified check mark so you can know which one is mine. Well, I ask every guest a big three for the finale. And the first one is if you could collaborate musically with anyone out there, who would it be? Ooh, are we talking Texas or are we talking uh, uh, just anybody? Anybody who's alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, man, I would probably say Cody Johnson. Um, I just, I have followed him from the beginning of his career. And, you know, I know that, that a lot of people, love him because he's he's so big time now but um i just have always thought he was the best 
male vocalist in Texas country music. His, his vocals are just unmatched. And for me, like I'm a lover of, of great singers and I know that he is a great singer live as well. And uh, I just really respect that. And not only is he that, but he's the whole package, you know, he's a great writer, a great performer. And uh, so he is probably my number one choice. He's the countryest sounding country singer for sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, I remember when he had, I guess it was his second album, whichever album was the one where he's in the pool room. That's, I think that's the one I, the first one I remember actually listening to. And, yeah. uh, it was my wife who was a big fan. She's like, have you heard him yet? And I was like, no. And so I listened to it and I mean, granted this was years ago and I was like, man, this guy sounds like he's more authentic than just about anyone else who's out there singing. And I got a yeah. little, I got a little nervous when he got to start blowing up, you know, I was like, Oh, you know, how's this, how's this going to go? I mean, I'm, I'm happy for artists when they make it big time, but I also get nervous because that's usually yeah. when they start changing and he's pretty yeah. much kept his sound for the most part. I mean, I, I'm glad he's done that because Texas needs it and really country music needs it. When you sell out the Houston rodeo and you're still singing real country music, that's a good sign. Absolutely. And there's a lot to respect about that and the way he's built his, his career, um, and being able to stay himself, you know, and not not compromising that. I'm, I'm very, very respectful of that. If you could headline any venue, where would you go play? Oh, probably. I mean, if we're not limiting ourselves to Texas, then I would say the Ryman Auditorium in, in Nashville. That's a good one. I've never gotten to go in. I've walked up to the front door like it was at night. So everything was closed. And I was just going through Nashville. But got to go up to it and just standing outside alone was kind of like, wow. Yeah. It, it's definitely one of those places you can just, you can feel the essence of it. <laughs> you know, bold prediction here. I think you'll probably end up there. I'm sure because there's just certain artists where I'm like, yeah, they're not just going to play local. They're not just going to play Texas. They're going to go everywhere. So don't be surprised if that happens, but oh, I, I act dear. like I'm some sort of industry insider. I don't know anything. I'm just making guesses out here, people. Um, <laughs> So the the big finale question that I ask everybody is what is the funniest or craziest story you can tell from your music career so far? Yeah, okay, let's see. There's been a lot of funny moments. Uh there's been a lot of uh <laughs> interesting things happen on the road. Um I would probably See, f funny is funny is hard because like, what you know, there's a lot of funny, sarcastic moments. And there's a lot of funny. Uh, wow, I can't believe that actually happened. And then there's there's <laughs> ha ha funny moment. Um, and they all overlap in a Venn diagram, too. That, yeah, they really do. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm trying to. I have one story that's come into my mind, but I don't know exactly how funny it is. Um, <laughs> It's kind of shocking. I'll just I'll just tell you that one because it's it's definitely it's definitely in the top like five of my most memorable moments. Um, it was actually when I was playing at Green Hall for the first time. I had brought my band and it was on Veterans Day. That's really actually kind of funny because today's Veterans Day. Yeah. Shout out uh, to all the veterans out there. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Um, and I was playing on, on that night and I was opening for, uh, Mr. Curtis Grimes and I was very nervous cause it was my first time to play there obviously. And so, uh, you know, the floor in that place af after all these years is, you know, kind of rickety and it's kind of uneven and there's places where it bubbles up and bubbles down. And so it's, it's a dance hall, but it's kind of not, safe to really <laughs> dance if you're not really careful and uh so anyway I got up to play I started my first song and it was going really great got into my second song and uh this older really cute couple got out on the floor they started dancing and um they were doing so good I mean pro dancers but and they were dressed alike and it was just the cutest little thing they're probably like 70 80 years old and uh, as soon as or before I could realize it, the lady that was dancing just dropped to the no. floor in the middle of my song. And I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Like, should I just keep playing and should I keep singing? So I kept singing for a minute and then a crowd started forming around her to try to see if she was OK. So. I stopped the band. We stopped completely, stopped the show and they got an ambulance out there and everything. And, uh, apparently she had somehow tripped and then hit her head on the floor. Oh no. And 
Uh, so yeah, she, she was going to be fine though, but they did get an ambulance out there and I ended up like praying over the audience. That was kind of a cool experience getting to, getting to pray in green hall. And, um, so I did that and, uh, they got her out of there and they got her to the hospital and I'm assuming she, she was fine, but it was kind of awkward trying to finish the show (laughs) after that. Um, so I guess, I guess you could call that kind of funny, like just trying to, trying to not be (laughs) and trying trying to get the wind back in my sails after that. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, how do you even start? Like, are we just going to pretend that didn't happen? Yeah. Right. And so that, that was the last time I played there. And so I'm really hoping that next time I can redeem myself and not have anybody get hurt. Uh, you can always you can always spin it. Be like, hey, she was okay because I prayed hard enough. You know, if if you need if your crowd needs some prayer, just book me. I'm there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, which song should we close out with? You know what? Let's go with one of my all time favorites. Um, let's play "Country Music Won't Let Me." That's a great one. Thank you so much for doing this. This is uh, it's one of the interviews I've been looking forward to book for a while. So glad we were able to arrange it, and uh, I am looking forward to seeing your full band shows spring back up and. After all, since I only live like 40 minutes from Waco, it'll probably be easy for me to get over there and see some stuff locally, too. Yeah, no, I would love that. I definitely got to have you out. And, um, you know, we, it's going to be a lot of fun getting this uh, getting through this COVID stuff and getting back to normal. So yeah. thank you for having <laughs> Yeah, this was really fun. I'm honored to be on here. That's great. Well, folks, this has been episode 35 with Holly Tucker, and y'all have a safe and wonderful week. Every time I leave you in the past, just when my mind quits looking back, I hear a hurting song that takes me back where we went wrong. It's like every word and melody was written just for you and me. I'd give anything if I could just move on A country music won't let me It's way too real It hits me heavy right when I'm letting go It keeps me holding on That lonely crying steel guitar Reap breaks the broken in my heart Thought I'd be over you It